This is the Republic of Molossia. It's got a dictator, a national instrument, and a national system of measurement. For example, an African bush elephant, which luckily aren't native to Molossia, would weigh roughly 6.7 grand Fenwicks. You see, it's smaller than a football pitch and surrounded entirely by Nevada, USA. But Molossia isn't a country, at least not according to all these other countries. Molossia is a micronation. Micronations are small, self-proclaimed entities that claim to be independent sovereign states. However, they don't have the acknowledgement of any other recognised sovereign state and therefore are widely dismissed. There's a lot of them. Take Austinasia for example, created by father and son emperors Terry and Jonathan. You guessed it, Austin. They've got a flag, a national anthem and even a so-called civil war. So why aren't these entities recognised as countries? Why can't I write a strongly worded letter to the government letting them know I'm seceding from the United Kingdom and claiming my house as the sovereign territory of a country made out of my name? Maybe not, bad example. Clearly, we need to work out what makes a country a country. Technically, there's a difference between countries and sovereign states, in that Scotland and Greenland are countries, but aren't sovereign states, even if they don't like it. But for simplicity, and because sovereign is really difficult to spell, I'll just call them countries. There are two theories on what makes a country, constitutative or declarative. Other than their inability to roll off the tongue, they're fairly different. Constitutative just requires a country to be recognised by other countries, but the more widely followed declarative theory has the following requirements. So let's test these criteria against Molossia, who, by the way, have their own time zone. See, all of these countries use non-standard time zones, ones which are not a round hour from Greenwich Mean Time, normally by half an hour. It's already a little confusing, but Molossia had to one-up them. They are an irritating 39 minutes ahead of Pacific Time, or 21 minutes behind Mountain Time. Anyway, back to the criteria, and the first two are easy. Kevin Bohr lives in Molossia with his wife, two children, and four dogs, who are apparently full <laughs> citizens. Molossia claims Bohr's house and property as its sovereign territory, so it clearly has a defined territory, even if the state of Nevada might not like it. Number three is more tricky. Kevin is the self-declared president, but he does have an advisory national assembly. You would probably call him a dictator, but the United Nations members list, another test of countryness, is host to several arguable dictatorships like Iran, Belarus and Kazakhstan. On to number four, and this is where Molossia gets really stuck. In theory it can have the capacity to enter relations with other nations, but it would rely on those nations wanting to do so, which almost none of them do. However, some micronations have claimed to have held relations with world powers. The Principality of Sealand has a really interesting history, including one event in 1978 when a German lawyer and his hired mercenaries stormed the country with speedboats, jet skis and helicopters. Now that might sound odd until you realise that Sealand really lives up to its name. Anyway, the invasion failed and the German man was captured. Here comes the important bit. During the hostage negotiations, Germany sent one of its diplomats to Sealand. Visits from official diplomats are often seen as badges of legitimacy. Therefore you could argue, as they have, that they had entered relations with another country. So are micronations really countries? No, not really. But all it would take is a few countries to begin recognising one of them and there would be a debate. And the micronations we've talked about so far have been the lucky ones. The Republic of Rose Island was an artificial structure 11 kilometres off the coast of Italy. It had a restaurant, bar, nightclub and post office. Unfortunately, the Italian government saw it as a tourist trap trying to avoid taxes and promptly invaded and seized the structure. They then strapped explosives to the supports and blew it into non-existence. Micronations and their validity are basically in the hands of the recognised powers. However, these tend to be the powers that the micronation is claiming land from, and if you listened at all in history, they kind of don't like that. So you might not be able to make your own real country yet, but you can set up your own micronation around your house and have coins, passports, and ban things at customs like walruses. Uh, walruses are certainly banned and plastic shopping bags are definitely not allowed because they are also horrible for the environment. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, then why don't you like and subscribe and I'll keep making more. If there's a subject you want to see a video on, then leave it in the comments and I'll do a bit of research. And yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.